COVID. <laughs> no, no, not funny, not funny at all. Just be careful. I think I'm pretty safe here. I can demask myself. So I'm ready to roll. Mappers, what happened, mate? Who have you been close to that's giving you this lurgy? Well, to clarify, mate, it's actually my middle son, Bryson, who's got it, not me. Oh. But uh, only a matter of time, I suppose, considering we live in the same house. It's um, been an interesting season, hasn't it? Culminating in this for, for myself. Well, and, it's... Uh, a lot of interesting stuff happening. Yeah, let's just touch on that briefly because, I, you know, I don't want to go boo-hoo-hoo, but COVID really ruined our chances for the men's one-day semi-final against the Gold Coast, really, didn't it? We had to... We had to draw on all resources at the last minute to get a side down there just to, to run out 11. Uh, we got pumped in the end, but because we weren't uh, at full strength. Yeah, we did, but, uh, mate, when you got Justin Poole in your uh, viewfinder for the KO uh, production, you know, you're struggling a little bit. Not that he's not an awesome player, but at 46 years of age, we've got younger blokes, that's for sure. Hmm. But mate, um, yeah, we can't complain. That's for sure. I, I, you know, the season's been amazing. Whether we talk about first grade with the white ball or um, the lower grades with the one day finals and premierships and the women's program going bigger and better than ever. Um, you know, we still got an under nineteens women's final to reschedule. Um, our youth did fantastically well when were struggling and got off to a slow start and then came home with an absolute flurry in, in the end and almost made the semis themselves. Their South East Youth Cup just blitzed them. Um, South joined this year and did a great job of being minor premiers, but when they came up against us in the finals, it's just one-way traffic. So, so many positives. Um, and yet, a, such a tough season. Uh, we knew it was going to be tough. The volunteers are knackered to be honest with you and uh culminating in um the passing of club legend ian Droney a couple of weeks ago and uh now the big fella sends down a heap of uh blood <laughs> rain it's just been unbelievable so we're uh looking forward to our presentation night in a couple of weeks and uh you celebrate bradery drinks and uh hopefully by that stage we're ready to light it up again in the off season for next year all right, let's go back to uh, let's go back to September, mate. Yep, there was a lot of turnover of uh, of uh, people. Alice McDermott was our coach. We had a new coach in Pooley and obviously Harshi the Silver. We had uh, players dropping out. We had David Toff coming in from England. We had uh, uh, maybe four or five debutants this year throughout throughout the throughout the summer as well. Um, did rock great in the white ball. We, we came up with the two ball competition. Then the white ball was all crazy. We got some premierships with uh, with the lower grades. The second grade women could have got in the final, as you said, but uh, wash out, you know, it was sort of ruined their chances this weekend. So, in, and I've spoken about it all years, Mappers. It's a lot better than I thought, considering the massive turnover we had in the off season, um, and that we bounced back and we just seemed to manage to actually, funnily enough, beat top sides and struggle with the lower sides. It's it's, it's funny how we lift, but that's consistency for you. Yeah, your attention to detail is poor as usual, mate. There weren't four or five debuts. There were six in the first round. There were 13. Oh, first yeah, debut. but I mean, from that, that turn, then we added Jordan oh, right, and, uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was, there was a big, big turn. Did you go along? Or? Yeah, yeah, pretty close. <laughs> Look, I'm, COVID. I'm only taking the mickey out of you, but uh, it's just to uh, showcase just how big a season it has been. Um, I'm damn sure we surprised a lot of teams in first and second grade this year. The lower grades, um, you know, their performance have been outstanding. Just, you know, and, and despite the addition of Dave Toft, we've actually done quite well. <laughs> well, I also want to make special mention to we quite regularly talk about you know, our coaches and the women's program with Kira and Belinda and Mark Somerville and all those sort of guys. But some of the people that are going unnoticed behind the scenes also need credit as well. Um, you know, I know he's my mate, but the effort that Stoney puts in upsetting weekly, if not daily basis, <laughs> can't be underestimated. And um, the structure that he's helped put in place is certainly growing the club to new heights. Um, the committee... Um, made up of Neil Bertel, which we all you know yeah. love, 
what Neil does and know what he does. And then his wife, Alison, annoying anyone who comes into the canteen on a, on a weekend. But there's a huge amount of work there that no one sees. Mm. We've got Dale Hansen, Mark Taylor, and um, and Andrew Milligan. And, you know, it, it's just, there's just so many of them making such a big difference. So we, we tend to look at what's visible and it's very easy to um, not see the people behind the scenes making such a huge difference. Um, you know, e even uh, we have to give some credit to not only the sponsors that we have on board and we, we tend to push them forward every opportunity we can, but organisations like the Bulls Masters and with Ken Healy and Jimmy Marr and, and those guys, they were supporting us holistically this year with the luncheon and other times throughout the season. Um, you know, dare I say it, the Bayside Pirates have been a big supporter of us after their venture into the BPL last year. And, and of course, last but not least, Queensland Cricket. I mean, far out. They've just gone through a torrid restructure and change of everything. But their support, not only for our club, but every club has just been immeasurable. Not only the curatorial program with Joe Clark, but Terry Spencer as CEO and and um, Alex Lau being new to the team, and then Bennett King, and and um, most importantly, my mate Teasy. Jeff's come on, yeah. on QC end of last year, and he hasn't even made a difference. Like we all knew he would, but um, probably even surprised me just the amount of work he's done. Well, I think you might have hit a nail on the head here, and I'm going. I'm going to talk personally here, Nappers. Um, you've got someone like Jeff Tease who's in this role now. He was a club president, so he knows. He, these, you guys, the volunteers, everybody down, they know what they need. They don't. Maybe you don't want cricket balls. Maybe you need something else. But you, you know, and and this is where you got to get. Uh, you got this. Got to get this information to the powers of being Jeff Tease. Well. I mean, great appointment there, isn't it? And he's just going to get some stuff done, and already has done. But this is what we need, Bennett King. We need these guys to go around to the clubs and ask the volunteers, ask the Neil Botels, ask the Chippy Hanson, what do we need? Seventh grade, do we need more facilities? Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And and then you guys can be proactive when they're proactive and it makes not your job easier, but I, I suppose uh, um, worthwhile because somebody actually cares upstairs and actually wants to put things in place. And the other thing I think you, I'm sure you were going to mention was uh, the juniors. I mean, oh my God, it's, it's like the Alamo. They just keep coming, those little green and yellow guys, don't they? Just swatting them away. They're everywhere. No, it's fantastic. The juniors, um, I don't call them the juniors because as far as I'm concerned, they're part of our club. Um, yep. One big one big family, and not just the juniors from Wynnum. Um, the juniors throughout it, Eastern Districts and, uh, you know, obviously the Bears, which we've had our up and downs times with, but, you know, there's some... There's some great relationships being rebuilt and restructured there. And of course, their relationship with the Logan District Cricket Association is just getting bigger and bigger. So, you know, you're talking in the realm of five, 6,000 players yeah. plus their families, plus their friends. It's a massive organisation these days. And um, and yeah, it's a, it's a massive job to uh, not just run them, but work with them, make sure they're all moving forward. I do want to make special mention, though, to the other 11 Premier Grade clubs because historically, um, Premier Grade clubs don't necessarily get on. You're not only com competing off the field, but you're competing, sorry, on the field, you're competing off it as well. But something's changed in the last couple of years for the better. And um, the Premier Clubs are all working in the same direction, um, supporting each other, giving each other ideas. Even when we disagree, we're agreeing to disagree and making sure that whatever we come up with, we support each other 100%. And that also works into the Warehouse Cricket Association and the sub-districts. And, of course, my mate, Cush from Brisbane Cricket League. I mean, the bloke who can run 55 teams in a single com competition, well, you know, that's bigger than Queensland Cricket would ever believe to be. And everyone just keeps astounding me, the efforts they're putting in. And that All of that is fantastic volunteer work that definitely needs... Um, acclamation and understanding of the mammoth effort it really is. Yeah, the 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 twelve clubs. I think, again, personally, I think they've been they've been fractured. They go off their own way and gets nothing gets done. So when you all come together, and you, yes, you, you said I, I, I don't agree with that. I agree with that. But let's come to a consensus. We can take it. Then you guys are being proactive. You're not bickering much yourselves, and you can take it upstairs and say this is what we need, and send it to Jeff Tees or whoever. 
But if, if, mm -hmm. if you're not getting along down here, they don't really care. Sort yourselves out, then come to us. But it, it's happened. And I'll give credit to yourself and a few of the other long-standing long CEOs. Obviously, Jeff Tees was one of them. And yourself, you've been there for 75 years. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, experience there from the past. But you, like a cricket game, you need these senior admin people to give guidance to the younger CEOs. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, just yeah. think of the past. Yeah, and but you also got to work the other way too, mate. Sometimes I might say something and be outvoted, you know, 11 to often. 1. Oh, okay. Not often, 11 to 1 <laughs> by the others. And I've got to take a back seat and go, okay, well, I know I'm right, but uh, if the general says <laughs> this, then maybe I might be wrong once or maybe there's a lesson that the others need to learn as well. So mm, mm, you, know, you can't mm. just rule with an iron fist as much yeah, as someone like calling me a dictator it doesn't work that in the big in the grand which is premier yeah, cricket. yeah but they're listening yeah once upon a time they weren't now they're listening no okay yeah it definitely is a team effort and alex has been alex lowby's been very good at that he's got his detractors that's for sure but i can't do anything but praise him and him and his boss nick um always have for us we'll answer the phone at any time ridiculous times um and whether they're doing it perfectly or not is inconsequential it's just the Effort is bigger than anything I've ever seen before, and yeah. it's got to be good for Premier Grade cricket. All right, uh, and another season does come to an end, mate. As as we uh, approach March, um, no more games. There's one obviously nothing this weekend, but the following weekend's the last round. But before then, we're going to push this out. Big things needed on Saturday morning, mate. We want uh, the army to come out um, and help for again clean up the mess. That uh, look maybe personally. Council, give us some help. We can't do it ourselves. And kids are running, they're not playing cricket. Anyway, that's just me. I just started up with the politics are, but it just seems to me this could be fixed and we could have more cricket. But anyway, let's not think. That's a bit harsh, mate. I just want to say that Council Lisa that would have been a massive help to us. Um, it might be a bit more internal than that, shall we say. Um, her efforts are showcased again this weekend by she's organised barbecue and food trucks and God yeah. knows what else. Yeah. Down and help us. Notorious for being the only council I've ever seen. Gurney, one of our picket fences, which was Bill Aubrey Oval. And and uh, this COVID thing's obviously going to allow me to keep these hands of mine um, blister free because I won't be there on Saturday morning. I'll be organising everything from behind my computer where I'm best at. Um, I'm sure you will get some blisters on those hands behind that computer over the next few days, Graham Mapri. Go your hardest. Uh, but that was... I don't know the politics. That's my thing. I just—it seems, seems to be going for a long, long time. We, every time anybody sneezes, we seem to go underwater at Bill Lawry. But yeah, your council maybe needs to go up high. But anyway, uh, highlights for you for the year, mate. Obviously, uh, on the field, there's obviously been some fantastic efforts. But uh, yourself, uh, the board must be pretty happy with uh, with renovations out the front of the clubhouse. Um, uh, things look better every year. You guys don't sit on your hands. You always come up with new ways to improve at the club. Yeah, one of the things that Drones taught me was that. Um, players like to see something new every year. I probably take that a little bit to the extreme and try and do four or five different things. But, um, you know, obviously the plans to, to light the facility, the second story, the groundsman's um, shed upgrade, all those sort of things, they're, they're dependent on grants, as most things are. But um, some of the best things that I've enjoyed this year, again, is um, basically showcasing our great club through yourself and all of our social media channels. And that's just growing more and more. The um, further interaction with um, our multicultural ties, um, mm. absolutely incredible. The um, brotherhood. The brotherhood, yep. As Ali Nasser would say, one of the best. And, um, and of course, our female contingent. I mean, everyone knows that's an absolute pet project of mine and something that I'm extremely proud of. Um, but the number of uh, young ladies and women that are playing at our club now are in excess of 100 if you include all the way down to the Friday night worst blast. So um, to think that we could have done that in four and a half short years is well, just ridiculous actually. But um, yeah, I, to be honest, the highlights are people-based, I suppose. Just so yeah. many good at the club now. Um, it was wonderful to get Jack come and jo join us. He's, he's just been brilliant for our club. Um, Old bag tofty, but he's been he's been fun in small doses. Um, <laughs> saying, um, 
but just other players that have come to us from other clubs, from other competitions, from other states. Um, I don't think we've really got a bad one at the moment. So mm. all them for making our family even bigger and better. Most certainly. Yeah, the flock is growing bigger and better. Um, yeah, obviously. Hey, you got bagged for that. Apparently seagulls aren't a flock. I saw someone have a crack at you on social media the other day. So you're going to have to look at what it is. Are they a murder? I don't think that's it. That's magpies, isn't it? Or crows. Crows. Crows, crows, crows is a murder. Anyway. Google somebody. So anyway, we're a bunch of uh, we're well, we're the we're the brother and sister who are come together. And obviously, a quick mention, obviously, the Redlands uh, for uh, their inclusion as well in the women's competition. All right, mate. Well, so I'm going to let you go so you can um, suffocate that bird in the background. My gosh, what is that? Is that lunch waiting for you? Yeah, mate. We're at the front of KFC at the moment. <laughs> spots for next year. Always working. Well, all right. Very goodly. Uh, yeah, good mention. Obviously, to our to the major sponsors. Obviously, with. Uh, uh, too many, too many names, but we have them on board. And obviously, with uh, the social media going very, very well, I do believe. Actually, I think you're going to put yourself out on grinder next year, mate. That'd be great. Um, see what sort of That's attention. <laughs> see how much attention we can get there. That'll go into meltdown. But anyway, swipe right, people. Mappers, always a pleasure, mate. I'll let you go, Doctor Reba. You look like a. You need to be stroking a cat. Mate, I'm already going crazy on day one. What's day seven going to be like? <laughs> All right, mate. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate your help as always. All right.